What if I told you that there's a simple, inexpensive little powder, nothing fancy, nothing exotic, that could help melt away stubborn fat, help your body build real solid muscle, and calm that slow burning inflammation that so many of us feel as we get older? And what if it could do all of that without requiring a complicated routine or one of those expensive programs people are always trying to sell you? Imagine something so well studied and so safe that researchers keep finding new benefits years after people first started paying attention to it. It's not locked away in some secret vault, and it's not a bodybuilder only secret. It's something almost anyone can use, and for those of us over 60, the changes it can bring can feel nothing short of life changing. Now, I'm not here to hype up the latest fad. I'm not here to convince you to chase some miracle cure that sounds too good to be true. I'm here to talk about real science, things that have been tested again and again, things that actually work, things that can help us stay strong, stay sharp, and stay active, even as the years tick by. Today, I wanna to walk with you through one of the most misunderstood but most powerful supplements we have, creatine. We're gonna break down what it does, how to take it properly, and why just a small daily amount, somewhere between five and seven grams, can make a surprisingly deep difference in how you feel, how you move, and how you age. So let's start with the big question. Why does this matter even more as we get older? Why should someone who's 65, 70, maybe even well into their 80s care about a powder that most people think is only for 20 year olds pumping iron in the gym? The answer comes down to three major challenges almost all of us face as time goes on. Rising inflammation, a slowing metabolism, and shrinking muscle mass. These aren't tiny annoyances. These are the forces behind that heavy fatigue that never seems to go away. The weakness you notice when you try to lift something you used to handle easily, the weight that suddenly sticks around no matter how carefully you eat, and the recovery that now takes days instead of hours. And the amazing thing is this, creatine touches all three of those issues. It's like flipping a switch inside your body that says, yes, I'm still strong. Yes, I can still bounce back. Yes, I can still live fully. Think about inflammation for a moment. We hear that word all the time, but what does it really mean? Picture a small fire inside your body, the kind that flares up when you're hurt or stressed. That's your body trying to heal itself. That's good. But as we age, that fire doesn't always turn off. It just keeps smoldering quietly, day after day. That steady burn can lead to joint pain, heart issues, memory problems, low energy, and a general feeling of being worn out before the day even starts. It's like living with a smoke alarm that won't stop beeping. Sure, you eventually tune it out, but it drains you all the same. Now add in a slowing metabolism. Remember how you used to eat a big dinner with dessert and somehow stay the same size. Those days have a way of fading. Your cells don't make energy quite as efficiently, so you burn fewer calories even when you're resting. You might notice yourself gaining weight more easily or feeling tired even on days when you haven't done much. And then there's muscle loss, something many people don't realize starts in our 30s and speeds up in our 60s. Less muscle means less strength, less balance, less independence. It means walking becomes harder, stairs feel steeper, and everyday tasks like carrying groceries or bending over feel like workouts. So when I say creatine helps calm inflammation, supports your metabolism, and directly builds and protects muscle, I'm not talking about vanity, I'm talking about quality of life. I'm talking about being able to keep up with your grandkids, take trips without feeling like you need two days to recover, feel steady on your feet, and enjoy the freedom that comes from a body that still works the way you want it to. Before we go further, let's clear the air. What exactly is creatine? Why is there so much confusion around it? Here's the real story. Creatine is not a steroid. It's not some risky chemical cooked up in a shady lab. It's a natural compound your body already makes in your liver and kidneys, and your muscles store most of it. Its job, to help your body produce ATP, your energy currency, the stuff every cell uses to function. When you move your muscles, when your brain fires messages, when your heart beats, that's all ATP. Creatine helps your body regenerate ATP faster, especially during bursts of activity. And the most effective, most studied version of creatine is called creatine monohydrate. It's been around for decades, it's cheap, and it works. Expensive versions with fancy names, they don't work any better. Stick with the simple stuff. Now here's something interesting. How you take creatine matters. There's a little transporter in your body called SLC6A8 that pulls creatine into your muscles. 
And guess what that transporter depends on? Sodium, good old salt. When you take creatine with a pinch of salt or an electrolyte drink, your muscles can absorb up to 40-50% more of it. Without enough sodium, creatine hangs around outside your muscle cells instead of going inside, which can make some people feel puffy or bloated. So if you've ever felt like creatine made you hold water, it may not be the creatine, it may be the lack of salt helping it get where it needs to go. There's another piece worth mentioning, a compound called GAA, which your body uses to make creatine. Some research shows that pairing GAA with creatine may help more of it reach your brain, hinting at even deeper cognitive benefits. But the big takeaway for now is this. A little salt, maybe some GAA, and daily consistency can make creatine work far better for you. Once creatine is inside your muscles, the magic really begins, especially for older adults. Several large studies in just the last few years looked at people under 50 who were doing strength training. Those taking creatine gained about two and a half pounds more muscle and lost about one and a half pounds more fat than those who didn't. That's not just looking better, that's changing your body composition in a way that helps your heart, your joints, your metabolism, and your everyday quality of life. And when it comes to strength, people taking creatine could lift about 10 pounds more in upper body exercises and around 25 pounds more in lower body movements. Think about what that means in your real life. Imagine getting out of a chair more easily, or climbing stairs without having to pause halfway, or carrying a full bag of groceries without feeling like your arms might give out. Even a small increase in strength can ripple into every corner of your life. And interestingly, creatine seems to help the lower body even more than the upper body, possibly because your legs and glutes are huge muscle groups that love that extra energy support. So how much should you take? This is where the science has evolved. For years, people thought five grams a day was the magic number. And that's still a good starting point. But new research suggests that seven grams may be even better for most people, especially if you want to maximize strength and muscle growth. If you're doing leg heavy training, walking, squats, lunges, or just trying to stay mobile, seven grams a day seems ideal. If you want more upper body strength, some people benefit from a loading phase, about 20 grams a day for five to seven days, split into smaller doses, then back down to five to seven grams daily. That saturates your muscles quickly, especially the ones in your chest, shoulders, and arms. But here's something important. As we age, the little transporters that pull creatine into our muscles aren't as efficient. That doesn't mean creatine stops working. It just means you might need a little more. Some experts suggest people over 50 might do better with 10 to 15 grams a day, especially if they're active or dealing with noticeable muscle loss. It might sound high, but remember, creatine is one of the most studied supplements in existence, and its safety profile is excellent. As for timing, don't overthink it. People used to debate whether to take it before or after workouts, but what really matters is consistency. Your body stores creatine over time. Whether you take it at breakfast, with an afternoon snack, or before bed doesn't matter nearly as much as taking it every single day. Some people mix it with juice, some with water and a pinch of salt, some with a protein shake, Whatever fits your routine is perfect. But creatine isn't just about muscles. It does far more for your metabolism and recovery than most people realize. A major review from 2023 looked at both anaerobic activities like lifting weights and aerobic ones like walking, biking, and swimming. And creatine helped in both. It reduces inflammation and oxidative stress, helps clear out waste products that make you feel sore, and allows your muscles to recharge their fuel more quickly. This means you recover faster, feel less wiped out, and can do more without feeling like you're pushing through mud. And here's something many women will find interesting. Women may actually need more creatine than men. Women naturally store about 10% more creatine, but they produce 70-80% less of it on their own. That means they rely more on food or supplements. So if you're a woman, you might want to take about 10-20% more than the standard recommendation, maybe 8 or 9 grams instead of 7. And taking it with sodium can help prevent that bloated feeling and get it into your muscles where you actually need it. Now let's talk about something that surprises a lot of people, creatine's impact on the brain. Your brain uses an enormous amount of energy, around 20% of your total. And just like muscles, your brain stores creatine in the form of phosphocreatine, which helps regenerate ATP when you're thinking hard, learning new things or trying to stay focused. When you supplement with creatine, 
you increase those fuel reserves, and that can change how your brain performs. Imagine trying to read a book, but your mind keeps drifting, or trying to remember names or appointments and feeling them slip right through your fingers, or having conversations where you feel just a step behind. Creatine can help with that. A 2022 study showed that just 5 grams a day in improved memory in adults over 65. People recalled names and details more easily, followed conversations better, and felt more mentally present. Creatine also reduces oxidative stress in the brain, improves oxygen delivery, and helps fight that heavy mental fatigue feeling. In one study, people took around 8 grams a day and noticed improved focus and less mental exhaustion. And in another, sleep-deprived participants took about 20 grams a day for a week, a high dose, yes, and their thinking, planning, and decision-making abilities bounced back dramatically. Their mood improved, too. They felt less irritable and overwhelmed, even though their sleep hadn't improved. Now, creatine isn't a replacement for sleep. Nothing replaces sleep. But during stressful periods, travel, caregiving, insomnia, it can help your brain withstand the strain. There's also early but fascinating research showing that people with lower creatine in certain areas of the brain are more likely to experience low mood, anxiety, and depression. That doesn't make creatine a treatment, but it does suggest that giving your brain the fuel it needs might help some people feel more emotionally steady. Think of it as support, something that helps you handle life a little more smoothly. But creatine doesn't just affect muscles in the brain, it touches your bones too. A big study in 2024 found that creatine didn't make bones denser the way many expected, but it did something arguably more important. It helped the bone cells themselves remodel and strengthen the bone structure, especially in the femur. That means bones became more resistant to fractures. They got smarter about handling stress. For older adults, where hip fractures are often life-changing, this is huge. There's emerging research about creatine and your immune system too. Immune cells need ATP to fight infections, and creatine helps them produce more. In one pilot study, neutrophils, a type of white blood cell, became more effective at destroying harmful bacteria. Inflammation markers dropped, and the immune system functioned more smoothly, not overly aggressive, not sluggish, just balanced. By now you can probably see the pattern. Creatine helps nearly every major system in your body. Muscle, brain, bones, metabolism, immunity, and it's safe, inexpensive, and widely available. Yet of course you might have heard concerns, hair loss, kidney issues, liver worries, dehydration. So let's settle those fears. The hair loss myth came from one tiny study showing a supposed rise in DHT. But dozens of larger studies found no increase in DHT, no change in testosterone, and no hair loss. A 12-week trial even examined hair follicles directly and found absolutely nothing. So no, creatine doesn't make your hair fall out. Kidney worries come from confusion around creatine, which rises when you take creatine. But increased creatine in this context doesn't mean kidney damage, it's just a natural byproduct. Studies on high doses show no kidney issues in healthy people. If you have kidney disease, yes, talk to your doctor. But for most people, creatine is completely safe. As for liver concerns, those came from a single rat study involving absurdly high doses. Actual human studies show no liver damage at any reasonable dosage. Cramps and dehydration? Those usually happen when people don't drink enough water or when their electrolytes are low. Remember, creatine pulls water into your muscles. If you're dehydrated or low on sodium or potassium, your fluid balance gets thrown off. The fix is simple. Drink water, use a pinch of salt, eat mineral-rich foods. The problem disappears. So now that we've cleared the myths, how do you actually take creatine in a smart, effective way? First, choose creatine monohydrate. It's the gold standard, it's affordable, and it works. Ignore the fancy versions, they're just marketing. Second, take five to seven grams daily for general health and muscle support. If you want brain benefits, try eight to 10 grams. If you're over 50, active, or dealing with muscle loss, 10 to 15 grams may be better. And during a stressful or physically demanding week, you can temporarily go up to 15 or 20 grams before returning to your usual amount. Third, consistency. Take it every day because your body stores it over time. Fourth, boost absorption with a pinch of salt or electrolytes. A little fruit juice can also help, but it's not necessary. Fifth, creatine is safe long-term. 
no cycling, no breaks needed. It's like taking a multivitamin, just part of your routine. And if you're curious about GAA, look for creatine supplements that include it, especially if brain support is your primary focus. Now let's zoom out. Why does all of this matter? Why does creatine deserve so much attention? Because it supports three pillars that shape how we age, muscle, brain, and inflammation. If you have strong muscles, you stay independent. If your brain stays sharp, you stay socially connected, mentally engaged, emotionally stable. And if your inflammation stays low, you reduce the risk of chronic disease. Creatine isn't magic, no supplement is, but it's one of the most powerful tools we have, safe, affordable, effective, and backed by decades of research. And here's the part I really want you to take to heart. Aging doesn't mean fading away. It doesn't mean giving up the things you love. With the right strategies, good food, daily movement, quality sleep, and smart supplementation, you can age with strength, confidence, and pride. I've spent years studying this stuff, testing it, and sharing it with people just like you. If I could recommend only one supplement to almost everyone over 60, it would be creatine. So if this helped you today, if it gave you clarity or answered questions you've carried for years, take a second and like this video so others can find it too. And subscribe so you don't miss future science-backed tips for living strong and staying sharp at any age. I'm here every week breaking down real research in a way that makes sense without the hype or fear. Now I'd love to hear from you. Drop a comment with your age and your number one health or fitness goal for the next year. Maybe you want to feel strong enough to hike again. Maybe you want more energy. Maybe you want clearer thinking or easier movement. Whatever it is, share it. Your story might be exactly what someone else needs to hear. Creatine builds muscle, helps burn fat, calms inflammation, powers your brain, supports bone and immune health. And it's simple and affordable. This isn't some elite, complicated protocol. It's something almost anyone can use. Just take that first step. Grab some creatine monohydrate. Start with five to seven grams a day. Add a pinch of salt. Be consistent. Give it a few weeks. Pay attention to how your body changes, your strength, your energy, your focus. I think you'll be genuinely amazed. Thank you for being here. Thank you for caring enough about your health to seek out real information instead of falling for hype or fear. You're not just listening, you're investing in yourself, and that matters. I'll see you in the next one. Stay strong, stay curious, and keep moving forward.